I recently made a video showing you how to map any MIDI controller to Ableton Live to control any Ableton instrument or third-party plugin with your keyboard's knobs. If you're using another controller, not a native instruments controller, check out that video here. Today, I'm going to show you how to set up any native instruments keyboard using Ableton so that you can control Ableton devices, effects, and other third-party plugins with those eight knobs. Now this works with the M32, the A series, the S series keyboards, but the S series actually takes things a step further with button control, and I'm gonna cover that too. Now, why is this setup important? Well, some MIDI controllers like the M32 have additional settings to control Ableton Live DAW controls like play, stop, record, and mixer controls like volume, pan, etc. But the default settings don't cover the functioning of the knobs for Ableton plugins or plugins from other manufacturers like Serum, Omnisphere. I'm going to show you how to set that up so you can control any of these plugins with the Native Instruments knobs. Also, if you're looking for a comparison of all the Native Instruments keyboards, I just created a video comparing every series they have to offer right here. All right, let's get into it. On your computer, open Ableton Live Preferences and go to the MIDI tab. For the M32 and A series keyboards, you should select Complete Control A as your control surface and in your input and output, select Complete Control M DAW or A DAW if you're using the A series. For the S series, you need to select Complete Control S Mark II in your control surface menu. And for your input and output, select Complete Control DAW dash one as your input and output. This is really important because these settings allow you to control Ableton's transport and mixer settings. But what about Ableton instruments and effects? Take a look at the other input and output options that you have. You'll see for the M32, I have Complete Control M32. For the S series, you have Complete Control S 49, Mark II, Port 1, or Port 2. It'll be different depending on which S-Series keyboard you have, but make a note of this other input and output option. Write it down if you want to. We're gonna need to use these input and output names in a second. All right, we need to create a user remote script. This is a one-time setup. First, go to this location on your Mac or PC and select the live folder that has your latest version of live. Once you're there, create a new folder. I'm gonna name this complete control M32 macro. Next, copy the file that you have in this folder right here, userconfiguration.txt. Copy that into the folder you just created. Copy it, don't move it. Now open that user configuration file and we're gonna make some changes. First, we're going to change the input and output names to the exact name of the free inputs that we have. Remember, this is what we saw in Ableton preferences. For the M32, it was complete control M32 for input and output. If you're setting this up for an S series, make sure you use the input named port one and type it exactly how it appears in the input and output menu. Next, go down this file to the device controls section where you'll see encoders. We're gonna change the value of the first eight encoders. Now on your keyboard, Press the MIDI button. On the M32 and A series, it's Shift and the plug-in MIDI button. Look at the values on the little screen that each of your knobs is registering. You'll see when I touch the first knob, it says CC14, the second knob CC15, and so on. These are the numbers that we're gonna input into this text file. So for the first knob under encoder one, we're gonna type in 14. For the next one, 15, and we'll keep going down the line. We're just doing these for these eight knobs. We're not gonna make any other changes here. Now we're done with this file. Save it and close it. Next, close Ableton Live and open it again. Now go back into Preferences, into the MIDI tab, and we're gonna add another control surface in addition to the one we're already using. For the control surface for this one, go look down the menu and you're gonna find the user control script we just created. Here it is, Complete Control M32 Macro. And for this one, the input and output should be the other input and output. So now you see we've got two separate control surfaces for your keyboard. And guess what? Now, these knobs are gonna control all Ableton devices, instruments, and effects. To do that, make sure you've got an Ableton device loaded. I've got Grand Piano loaded up here, and I'm gonna to shift to the MIDI mode, and now when I turn the knobs, you'll see that all the knobs work.
That's it. Pretty cool, right? Press the track to go back to the mixer controls, and now the knobs are controlling your mixer. And complete control still works as well. But we're not done yet. All right, next we're gonna map a third party instrument. You can use anything like Serum, Omnisphere, or any other plugin. Before we do, if you're looking for some free third-party plugins, I created a video featuring some really cool stuff that's free, and you should check it out over here. I'm gonna load Serum, which is a popular third-party synth plugin, but you can really load anything else right now. Let's get into it. All right, I've got Serum open up here, and you'll notice that the knobs on the M32 keyboard don't control anything in Serum. We're gonna fix that so that the next time you need to use Serum, your knob settings controlling Serum are gonna be saved and you can open it in any project. Let's get started. First, click the triangle button at the bottom left and then press configure. Now move any parameter in the Serum software that you wanna control with your MIDI keyboard. I'm gonna choose cutoff at first. I'm just gonna move that and you'll see it appear in the Ableton device. You can choose up to eight controls. I'll just choose a few for now. Once you've done that, click the configure button again to get out of that. Now right click your device and select group. Then in the group tab at the left, click on the knob button. And now you see eight macro knobs. Now we're gonna map the macro knobs to the configuration parameters we just created. Click on map, click the configuration parameter and then click map. And you can keep doing this for all of the controls that you've mapped. Click the map button to get out of mapping. And now we're gonna save this as a new instrument rack. Click the save button and let's name this Serum for M32. Let's test out the knobs. Remember, we need to go into the MIDI mode and now let's see if the knobs work. And they do, look at that, we're controlling Serum. So now every time you load Serum, you should be loading the Serum for M32 instrument rack that you just created. Now repeat the steps that I took with Serum for any other third-party plugin, and you're gonna have complete control of all your third-party plugins. Now if you have an S-Series keyboard, you have even more tricks with the buttons. Let's move on to S-Series. For this part, we're gonna do some setup in the Complete Control software. You need to open the standalone version of the Complete Control software. Don't open it as a plugin in Ableton Live. Click the MIDI symbol at the top right of the Complete Control window. You'll notice that you have access to configure your knobs, your buttons, and even your touch strip. You can even rename your buttons and knobs here. You'll see that I've done that with my knobs. I'm gonna show you how to use the buttons to program things like previous and next buttons within plugins. And you can also use them to control other functions. I'll show you how. I'm actually gonna use Nexus 2 and Omnisphere for this example. Now here's something important. If you're using Nexus 2 by ReFX, the MIDI CCs are hard-coded into the Nexus 2 plugin, so you'll have to program those first. Take a look at the screen. I'm showing you the preset MIDI CCs that are hard-coded into Nexus 2. The previous preset and Nexus Next preset buttons are CC numbers 96 and 97. So input 96 and 97 for those two buttons for your complete control. And you can change the name of the button as well. Leave the mode as toggle. Now let's go back to Ableton Live and let's try out Nexus 2. Now let's use the buttons at the top of the complete control screen. And you'll see that they're changing the presets in Nexus. Now you can do the same thing to the previous and next categories for Nexus 2. The previous category MIDI CC is 98 and the next category MIDI CC is 99. Let's move on to Omnisphere. In Omnisphere, like many other plugins, you can MIDI learn buttons. So right click any button in Omnisphere that you want the complete control keyboard to learn. I'm gonna choose the orb on button. When you right click it, click on MIDI CC learn and then press the button on your complete control keyboard. I've done this as well with the arpeggiator. The great part about Omnisphere is that you have the MIDI learn function on the next and previous preset buttons as well. So if you right click those, 
for some reason my menu is popping up here you do have the MIDI CC learn as well so you can teach Omnisphere to respond to your previous and next buttons I've had similar success in setting up previous and next buttons in Analog Lab by Arturia. Arturia has a MIDI controller setup function where you can map MIDI CCs. Now, not every plugin allows you to map preset buttons and category select buttons and things like that, but experiment with what you've got and see what you can do. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Make the music you love. And hey, check out one of these videos next.